Hello, New York Giants fans, and welcome to a new edition of the Valentine's Views podcast here on YouTube. Please like, share, and subscribe to support the channel. Your Giants open the uh, the regular season on Sunday against the Minnesota Vikings, and I thought we would uh, we would go through five matchups to watch on Sunday as the the Giants who are one and a half point underdogs per SB Nation partner fan duel uh, try to get the season off to a good start as they celebrate their their hundredth season of competition in the NFL be an emotional day lots of uh, Giants greats in the building as the Giants celebrate their top 100 players of all time lots of lots of ceremony to uh, to mark the the hundredth season as an NFL team, so the uh, the last thing you want for the New York Giants is for them to uh, to put together a week one stinker uh, and sort of uh, and sort of ruin the party. So we'll we'll cross our fingers and we'll hope that it's a good day for your New York Giants. And let's go through five matchups that could be critical to uh, to Sunday's outcome. The first one that I jotted down here in my notebook is uh, Giants cornerback Deontay Banks against Minnesota Vikings superstar wide receiver Justin Jefferson. Jefferson common, commonly acknowledged as the best wide receiver in the game, which is saying a lot with, with guys like uh, guys like Jamar Chase and, and, and several others in the league right now. But uh, Jefferson acknowledged as, as the number one guy, uh, had 1,800 receiving yards on 128 receptions in, uh, in 2022. Uh, last year, when he only played in 10 games due to injury, Jefferson still topped 1,000 yards, getting just over 1,000 yards on 68 catches in those 10 games. So Jefferson, as Giants fans know, you know we, we've seen the Giants play against the, against the Vikings before. Giants fans are, are well aware of how good Justin Jefferson is, and the question all along, you know, for the Giants when they look at the secondary, they drafted Tay Banks, traded up to in the tail end of of the first round in 2023 they drafted Tay Banks out of the University of Maryland hoping that Banks would become their number one guy would become a shutdown corner would become a, a top tier guy at the position and you know Banks had an had an up and down rookie year showed some flashes the question at this point is is Tay Banks really ready for the responsibility of whenever the Giants are playing man-to-man -man defense? Is he ready for the responsibility of going up week in and week out against the Justin Jeffersons, the C.D. Lambs, the the Stephon Diggs of of the world? Is he ready? You know, for for going up against those top tier guys, the Giants will see the Cincinnati Bengals later in the season. I've had the opportunity to talk to Banks a number of times. This is an incredibly talented young man with incredible physical traits. You look at his uh, relative athletic score, and it's it's top of the charts for for cornerbacks. You know. For, who uh, who have have been graded, you know, in uh, in relative athletic score or in the mock draftable spider charts? It's it's top of the charts. The athleticism is outstanding. The ability is outstanding. Banks is a confident, confident player. You know, he said this week he was really looking forward to the challenge. Said he was born for for this. The question is, is he ready for it? I'm not quite sure that that he is. Uh, I we haven't seen it. We saw him play a little bit against number one wide receivers, you know, as a rookie in 2023. 
And if memory serves, it, it didn't always go well. I think that Tay Banks is a good player at this point. I would feel really, really good about the cornerback situation if Tay Banks was cornerback two. If there was a veteran corner who was cornerback one, you know, and 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 was and had been a shutdown guy or had been a number one corner for several years. And even having re-signed a Dory Jackson, uh, the Giants don't have that. We'll see, you know, Banks, we'll see if Banks is up to to the to the responsibility. Um, as I said, he's a confident guy. He has ability. I just don't know if he's ready at this point in his career, you know, for the responsibility of of chasing around a guy like Justin Jefferson, you know, snap after snap. Of course, Banks did spend his summer chasing Malik neighbors around. So that's pretty good preparation. We'll see how well uh, how well Banks does against Jefferson. We know that Shane Bowen's defense will rely on more zone coverage, more more uh, you know more of that sort of zone principles and, and different coverages instead of heavy blitz rate with man to man leaving cornerbacks out on an island. But even within zones, there are individual matchups, and whenever the Giants are in man to man, I think you can expect Banks to to be on Jefferson and uh, and we'll see how that goes. Second matchup that that's on my mind is really the uh, the New York Giants offensive line, the much discussed offensive line against the Minnesota front seven and really against the uh, the, the maniacal mind of Minnesota defensive coordinator Brian Flores. The Vikings are a unique, difficult challenge for this, once again, revamped Giants offensive line. The Vikings in uh, in 2023 blitzed more than any team in the NFL, but they also play in a unique style where they also led the league in three-man pressures. There are very specific things that Brian Flores does and the the pressures that he's going to bring and and the unique way that he's going to play defense is a challenge for this Giants offensive line. It's also a challenge for Daniel Jones to understand what he's seeing, but we we will learn a lot about this revamped Giants offensive line on Sunday against Minnesota. The one thing that I feel good about in terms of preparation with this Giants offensive line is that it is a veteran group. Greg Van Roten and Jermaine Illuminor, who will be on the right side of that line, have played together for the last couple of years with the Las Vegas Raiders. They've played next to each other. They know each other. John Runyon is a veteran player. Andrew Thomas is one of the best in the league. But, you know, the Giants also have, you know, John Michael Schmitz, second year center. But the concern, of course, is that because of injuries, because of shuffling, this offensive line didn't begin to practice together until last week, until the preseason was over. The the comforting thing with this group is that they are all, with the exception of John Michael Schmitz, these are all veteran players. These are all guys who have seen, you know, they've they've seen all the tricks. They've seen the blitz packages. They understand, you know, the rules that they're going to be using in, in trying to protect Jones. And that, the veteran status of those players what I'm trying to get to is even though they haven't had a lot of reps together, the veteran status of those players, the experience, the cumulative experience that they have should go a long way toward helping them communicate and helping them do at least an adequate job of giving Daniel Jones and the Giants a chance to to run an offense on Sunday. 
All right, the third matchup, I mentioned Malik Neighbors earlier, and I don't know how the Vikings are going to play defensively. I don't know what their coverage plans are uh, against Neighbors, the uh, the uber-talented number six overall pick on whom the the Giants are, are placing so many of their 2024 hopes and dreams uh, in terms of, of being better than they were a year ago. But I'm wondering if the Vikings will use Stephon Gilmore, the the former all-pro corner that they signed just recently, as a matter of fact. I'm wondering if Gilmore will be tasked with shadowing Malik Neighbors whenever the Vikings are in man coverage situations. And that will be a really interesting matchup if it occurs Gilmore, now 33 years old, soon to be 34 in just a couple of weeks. I don't know if you consider him or or should consider him a lockdown number one cornerback anymore, but really good player in the NFL for a long time. And and we'll see if if Gilmore gets that matchup. And, And overall, we'll see how the Vikings choose to cover neighbors if they show him you know the respect of a of a wide receiver one you know who's been in the league for a little bit or if they or if they make him prove it and uh, and we'll see if he can prove it on Sunday so interesting really to see for me anyway how Brian Flores and the Vikings approach covering neighbors who most likely is going to see the ball come his way quite a bit. I would think that that neighbors is is easily if he's healthy, he's easily going to be north of 100 targets this year. Might be north of 150 targets. Who knows? But uh, neighbors is going to be heavily featured in the Giants' offense, and and I'm very curious to see how the Vikings choose to defend him on Sunday. All right. The next matchup for me is Giants all-world nose tackle Dexter Lawrence against Minnesota center Garrett Bradbury in the interior of that Minnesota offensive line. Two years ago, when the Giants played the Vikings in the playoffs, Dexter Lawrence had his way with Garrett Bradbury. Of course, that's not a surprise. Over the last couple of years, you know, Sexy Dexy has had his way with a lot of centers, with a lot of interior offensive linemen. Garrett Bradbury is a good player. He's been a good starter in the NFL for a while. Um, so I'm interested to see that matchup, you know, just how much attention, you know, how many other blockers the Vikings send at Lawrence. I'm interested to see how much rest the Giants give Lawrence. There's not uh, there's not a lot of proven depth on the Giants defensive line. They list fifth round, 2022 fifth round pick and 2023 seventh round pick. Or 2022 fifth round pick DJ Davidson and 2023 seventh round pick Jordan Riley as the backups at nose tackle behind Dexter. I would think Rakeem Nunez Rochez might take some snaps there, but one of the issues for the Giants, one of the things is, you know, Dexter Lawrence is a is a six foot four, six foot five, three hundred and forty something pound man, played an inordinate number of snaps the last couple of years. How many snaps can he play? How much is how many snaps is he ready to play? Uh, and when he's on the field, uh, you know, how will the Vikings go about uh, trying to handle him? That that matchup with, between Lawrence and Bradbury is one that Lawrence got the better of the last time we saw it. And, and we'll see how that goes this time around. All right, the last matchup that I wanted to address, the Giants made a huge move this offseason, giving up a lot to go out and get edge defender Brian Burns and paying Burns a ton of money. The Giants now have Burns on one edge with Kayvon Thibodeau on the other edge. 
the Vikings have a really good left tackle in Christian Derisaw. They have a good quality veteran starter at right tackle in Brian O'Neill. And it's going to be very interesting to see whether it's the Giants' edge players on the defense or the Vikings' edge blockers on offense who win that particular matchup. And that could go a long way toward determining the outcome on Sunday. All right, as for my prediction, at BigBlueView.com, I'm predicting the Giants to win this game. Um, I look at this game, and I think the Giants understand with their schedule, with with the Vikings Week 1 and Washington Week 2, followed by a string of, of games against Dallas, Philadelphia, Seattle, uh, Cleveland, um, and I, I can't remember who else is, is on that schedule, and I don't have it in front of me, but it's Cincinnati, I think, is, is, is the other team. The, the five games that come after that, and to throw in a sixth game, I think, is the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's a difficult six-game stretch you know, after weeks one and two. I think the Giants understand the importance of week one and week two. I think that's a big part of the reason why training camp and even the the spring practices were were more competitive than uh, than the ones run by Brian Dayball in 2023. It's also going to be an emotional day filled with festivities for the Giants because of the hundredth the hundredth anniversary celebration because they'll be honoring their top 100 players of all time. So I don't know if you consider that pressure or not, but there should be there, there, there should be kind of a festive atmosphere in MetLife Stadium. And obviously the Giants don't want to, uh, you'd hope they don't wreck that. You'd hope they don't, you know, put a damper on it. And also the Giants fully understand the, the one and five and eventually two and eight start that they got off to a year ago is something that can't happen again. And th the best way to prevent that is to win to win week one, to get the season off to a good start. I simply think, I mean, to, for me, this is a toss up game. You know, Sam Darnold is a journeyman quarterback at this point in his career. A lot of people think Daniel Jones should be a journeyman quarterback at this point in his career. Jones has a lot to prove. So we'll see what happens. I find it to be a winnable game for the Giants. And I just feel like like the circumstances, like their, their need to win this game and, and maybe the, the circumstances, the pageantry around this 100th anniversary celebration game will push the Giants to a victory over the Vikings on Sunday. You can check out all of our staff predictions at BigBlueView.com, as well as all of our coverage, pregame, in-game, post-game of Giants-Vikings at BigBlueView.com as well. All right, Giants fans, that's the uh, that's the show. Thank you, as always, for, for watching. Please stay safe out there. Take care of each other. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.